Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to go over some worked examples covering types of uncertainty. So specifically, we're going to be looking at scale reading uncertainty, mean and random uncertainty, systematic uncertainty, and calibration uncertainty. So most of this is going to be a recap from higher physics with the exception of calibration uncertainty. If you want to navigate to a certain type of uncertainty, then just check out the timestamps in the video description to get there quicker. And if you haven't already done so, feel free to check out my video covering the theory on this topic as that will help you answer these questions. So let's get started. So the first type of uncertainty we're going to look at is scale reading uncertainty. We'll be looking at both analog scales and digital scales. Question one says, what is the reading uncertainty in the analog scale shown below? Well, we need to remember the rule for analog scales, which is that the reading uncertainty in an analog scale is equal to plus or minus half of the smallest scale division. So if I look at this example, I've got a scale in centimetres and I've got 10 divisions between the 6 and the 7. I'm not sure why some of these markings are a bit squint, but hey ho. So that means that each scale division is going to be 0.1, which means we have plus or minus half of 0.1 centimetres, which gives an answer of plus or minus 0.05 centimetres. Question 2 says for each of the analogue scales shown below, write down the reading and estimate the scale reading uncertainty, stating your answers in absolute form. So for part A, we've got a scale in millimetres and you'll see it goes up in twos and we've got 10 little division markings between the two and the four. So that means that each marking is gonna represent 0.2 millimeters. So if we look at our arrow, first of all, it's pointing to the first one after three, so that's gonna give us a reading of 3.2 millimeters. Then we need our rule for scale reading uncertainty for an analog scale, which is that the reading uncertainty is equal to plus or minus half of the smallest scale division. In this case, our smallest scale division was 0.2, so it's plus or minus half of 0.2 millimeters which gives a final answer of plus or minus 0.1 millimetres. And then writing this in absolute form, we have 3.2 plus or minus 0.1 millimetres. Part B gives us a scale in centimetres, and you'll see there are 10 little division markings between the one and the two. So that means that each little division is gonna be 0.1. So the first thing to do is to look at our reading. So that arrow is pointing to the third division along. So that's gonna give us a reading of 2.3 centimetres. And then our reading uncertainty in the analog scale is equal to plus or minus half of the smallest scale division which is plus or minus half of 0.1 centimetres in this case, which gives an answer of plus or minus 0.05 centimetres. Writing this in absolute form now, we have 2.3 plus or minus 0.05 centimetres. And lastly, part C, we have a scale in degrees Celsius, and our arrow is pointing to halfway between the 0.2 and the 0.3. And you'll notice we've got 10 little division markings between the 0.2 and 0.3, so each division must be 0.01. So this means our arrow gives a reading of 0.25 degrees Celsius. And our reading uncertainty in the analog scale is equal to plus or minus half of the smallest scale division, which is plus or minus half of 0.01 degrees Celsius, which gives us plus or minus 0.005 degrees Celsius. So writing this in absolute form now, we have 0.25 plus or minus 0.005 degrees Celsius. Moving on to question three now, we have digital scales. So what is the reading uncertainty in the digital scale shown below? We've got 8.94 seconds, and we now need to remember the rule for the reading uncertainty in a digital scale. So the reading uncertainty in a digital scale is equal to plus or minus one of the least significant digit. So in this case, the four represents where our least significant digit is, but the actual number four doesn't matter. It's just the smallest value that this digit can take, which is a one. So our least significant digit is plus or minus 0.01 seconds. Question four says, for each of the digital scales shown below, write down the reading and estimate the scale reading uncertainty, stating your answers in absolute form. So there's three parts to this, A, B, and C. And you'll notice the readings are gonna be quite straightforward to take from the digital screen. So we've got in part A, 7.84 seconds, which simply gives a reading of 7.84 seconds. And our reading uncertainty in the digital scale is gonna be plus or minus one of the least significant digit. This is similar to question three, where our least significant digit is gonna be when this value here takes a one. So it's gonna be plus or minus 0.01 seconds. Writing this in absolute form now, we have 7.84 plus or minus 0.01 seconds. Part B now is some kind of ammeter where we've got 1.005 amps on our screen. And that means our reading is gonna be quite simply 1.005 amps. Our reading uncertainty then in that digital scale is equal to plus or minus one of the least significant digit, which would be this one here, when this takes a value of one. So our uncertainty is gonna be plus or minus 0.001 amps. And writing this in absolute form, we have 1.005 plus or minus 0.001 amps. Notice that I'm stating this to one significant figure. And lastly, in part C, we have 195 on our screen and we have our dial set to milliamps. So this means that our reading is gonna be 195 milliamps. 
and our reading uncertainty in that digital scale is going to be plus or minus one of the least significant digit. So the least significant digit would be this one here. So it's going to be quite simply plus or minus one milliamp. Writing this in absolute form now, we have 195 plus or minus one milliamp. Next, we're going to look at two examples of mean and random uncertainty, where you're usually asked to calculate the mean in a set of results first, and then calculate the random uncertainty. Question one says, in an experiment to investigate Ohm's law, a Nat 5 pupil records values of current every time she changes the voltage. The current readings are as follows. So that's these things here. So there's one, two, three, four, five sets of results in amps. And part A says calculate the mean current. So remember to calculate the mean, we need to add them all up and divide by the total number of measurements. So this gives us all of these numbers added up, divided by five because there's five sets of results, which equals 0 0.44 amps. And notice how I've stated that to two decimal places just to be consistent with what was in the question. Part B says to calculate the random uncertainty in the mean. So remember to calculate the random uncertainty, we need to take our maximum value, subtract the minimum value and divide it by the total number of measurements. So that's equals 0 0.44 minus 0 0.42 over 5 which equals plus or minus 0 0.006 amps. Question 2 says a misbehaving student is forced to time 10 swings of a pendulum as a punishment. They repeat this 5 times. The readings obtained are these things here. So they're all given in seconds and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 sets of results. Then says calculate the mean time for 10 swings and the random uncertainty in the mean, stating your final answer in absolute form, i.e. mean plus or minus the uncertainty. So remember the mean is given by the sum of the measurements divided by the total number of measurements, so we add them all up and divide by 5 and we get a mean of 1.2 seconds. Then to find the random uncertainty, we have the maximum value minus the minimum value divided by the total number of measurements, which gives us 1.4 minus 1.1 divided by 5 equals plus or minus 0 0.06 seconds. And now to write this in absolute form, we have 1.2 plus or minus 0 0.06 seconds. Notice that that is one significant figure. Now we'll look at two quick examples on systematic uncertainty. So question one says, explain what is meant by a systematic uncertainty. So this is straight from the notes. So remember a systematic uncertainty occurs when all measurements taken are affected in the same way. For example, the readings may be all too high or all too low due to a faulty measuring device or a failure to calibrate a device to zero before taking measurements. Question two says, in an experiment to investigate Ohm's law, a student obtains the following graph of voltage against current. So remember, this is what we should expect, a straight line through the origin on a graph of voltage against current. And it says to redraw the above graph and add another line to show what the line of best fit would look like if there was a systematic uncertainty in the current readings, i.e. all too high. So remember, if the voltage readings are all too high, we're gonna have a line over this side, but this example is specifically asking us about current readings being all too high. So we need to think about this axis now, and if these values are all offset from the origin by being all too high, then they're gonna be offset over this side. So our line looks like this. Lastly, just a quick example to get us thinking about calibration uncertainty. Question one says, explain what is meant by a calibration uncertainty. So a calibration uncertainty occurs when there is a difference between a manufacturer's claim for the accuracy of an instrument and an approved standard. So the manufacturers that make measuring instruments in factories will state what they think the accuracy of their instrument is. It can lead to systematic uncertainties, though remember other factors will usually have a greater effect on results. So things like your scale reading uncertainties and your random uncertainties. That's all for this video guys. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.